Hi guys, Brand the Mr. Headache here, and here to help you with Xenomorph starting tips. I wrote a guide this year talking about the Xenomorph, and it is approaching 300 pages at this point. And this guide, while helpful as an open wiki source, mostly is aimed towards people trying to master the killer. However, people that are just trying to pick up and play the Xenomorph are feeling a little bit left out. So this video guide will be dedicated to the bare bones essentials to playing the character if you just want to play them casually. Let's go ahead and talk about the best Xenomorph starting tips. Number one, use the tunnels for tracking. If you're unaware, while in the tunnels, the Xenomorph has 16 meters of footstep reading unless crouched or holding a turret. You can also hear sounds within this range, so anything that would make a sound working on a gen, healing, etc. will be heard within this range as well. Also, when you exit a control station while you're leaving the tunnels, you get 12 meters of killer instinct, allowing you to have pinpoint information of any survivors that were currently around you. Not only is this excellent because it gives you pinpoint information of the survivors, but also if you saw footsteps before previously leaving the control station and you do not receive the killer instinct, that means the survivors moved away, not towards. So it's kind of a information either way. With this, there's very little need for info perks on the Xenomorph because you have so much information built into your base kit. Number two, deal with flame turrets as soon as possible. One of the biggest frustrations that people have with playing the Xenomorph is the flame turrets and dealing with them and getting knocked out of your power over and over again. It's one of those things that I think airs itself to the character's higher skill floor than people perceive it to be because dealing with flame turrets isn't as easy as people make it out to be. So what I'm gonna recommend you to do is prioritize breaking over ignoring. A lot of people, even while not using the flame turret add-on specifically, decide that they're going to leave turrets up and try to greed the hit, whether that be with a lunge, your tail attack, whatever it happens to be, and greed the hit over just dealing with the turret. Believe me, adding just three to four seconds to your chase is definitely, definitely worth it in the long run, because if you lose your crawler mode, you lose access to your tail attack, then at that point, you're just 115 alien lizard with hand. So please, please, please break turrets the moment that you see them. Even if you're able to skirt out of the way of a turret, it often comes back to haunt you later, so it's probably better to just deal with it in the moment. Also, try to use your basic attack or lunge over your tail attack where possible. Keep in mind that the tail attack, while an excellent tool, does technically have a longer cooldown than the normal basic attack. Basic attacks are 2.7 seconds where the tail attack is 3 even. The thing that makes this especially frustrating is that anything any time the tail attack does not hit a survivor, you suffer a 1.2 meter speed uh, penalty for missing a quote unquote missing a tail attack. And this includes the flame turrets. If you hit the flame turrets, you technically did not hit a survivor. Game counts it as a miss. So you, you, you suffer that movement speed penalty, which sucks. So always try to use your lunge or basic attack to handle flame turrets where applicable. You can run add-ons to help deal with this. And these are Xenomorph's best add-ons, Emergency Helmet and Lambert Star Map. But... This doesn't mean that this gives you a license to ignore turrets. This is a bad habit that I often have that comes back to haunt me, and it's me telling you to, to learn from my mistakes without having to suffer as well. Please break your turrets the moment you see them. Tip number three, use the tail tip to aim. This is probably what you're here for. You're probably here for help with the tail attack because a lot of people get frustrated with this. Usually the top two complaints I hear about the Xenomorph is flame turrets are annoying or the tail attack is hard to use. The tail is often accused of being distracting the way it hangs at the top of your screen directly in your field of view, obscuring your vision, but this is actually here to help you. If you look at an actual crosshair in the game, you can see that the tail tube is actually fairly close to the center of the screen. If you just simply account for the slight horizontal and vertical difference between this, you can essentially use this as a crosshair that is built into the game. Also, this is skin reliant, so each cosmetic has its own kind of accuracy when it comes to being close to the center of the screen. The blighted xenomorph is the closest, uh, and the clone skin being the worst. But if you only have default, it's actually fairly good. It's actually fairly all right. So you don't have to even have to buy a skin to do fairly well here. Number four, strafe. If you are unaware, you can actually strafe the Xenomorph's tail attack kind of like you can with the Nemesis where you drag it from left to right, right to left, however it happens to be to cover as much space as possible. And there's not really any reason to not do this as much as you can. The only difference here being that you must avoid a collision. Nemesis, if you hit collision with the tentacle whip, you can keep going. However, with the Xeomorph, when you when you hit a wall or you hit a rock, you hit whatever, your tail attack stops, unfortunately. And this especially counts for hitting the ground, which we'll get into later. Otherwise, this is an excellent tool to cover as much area as possible. If you have played other ranged killers like Huntress Deathslinger, I'm sure you've been in a pretty frustrated spot where somebody just randomly moves in a way that is just quite literally unpredictable. And despite the fact that you were being patient, you were aiming well, they just 
did something weird and now they've dodged out of the way. Uh, that is not a thing that happens with the Z-Morph because you just strafe and cover all, both options, which is very nice. In addition, when you're strafing, try to move with your body and not with your camera. A big mistake that I see a lot of Z-Morphs make is they try to like strafe with their camera only and it just kind of looks like their tail tech's just like flying all around the place and of course that a makes you more susceptible to hit collision and b makes your aim more inaccurate move with your body left to right whether that be your left analog stick or wazd use your body to move your tail attack that way you can use your camera to make slight adjustments to make your tail attack more accurate where you're mostly focusing on just using your body to do the rest which is far easier and last but not least, number five, aim center mass. This is an FPS term that simply means aim for the center of the body. The reason that we do this is because a lot of characters in Dead by Daily, it's actually more advantageous to shoot at the legs. Pinhead comes to mind. Pinhead uh, literally freezes in place when he goes for his ranged attack, quote unquote. Um, so hitting the ground helps him recover quicker. And that's the case for a lot of characters in Dead by Daily. However, with the Z-Morph, it is actually the opposite. If you're shooting at the legs with the Z-Morph with the tail attack, nine times out of 10, you're gonna phase through their legs and bop the floor. That's because of the collision sensitivity of the tail attack. And there's kind of no way around it. It's just kind of like the way the attack works. It's very frustrating, but there's a method to the madness. <laughs> so you can aim center mass. So from about their like waist butt area up to their like shoulder neck area, you will hit almost all of your tail attacks as long as you're aiming higher on the body as opposed to lower on the body. This this piece of advice in particular is one that has saved a lot of people a lot of heartache when they are trying to learn and get better at the Xeomorph. All right, so those are the five most essential Xenomorph starting tips. As somebody who wrote the guide, hopefully this helps you get better at the Xenomorph. And if you want to know more, if you want to get more into the character, I do have that 300 page guide that I will be putting down in the description below. However, that's going to be it for today's video, friends. I appreciate it so much for watching. It would mean a lot if you left a like and subscribe if you liked my content. But other than that, I appreciate you guys so much. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Hopefully I will see you in the next video. But if I do not, I will see you when I see you. Goodbye.